my name is Gareth, this is my wife Lizzie, and together we lead St Philip's Chapel Street. And we just want to welcome you today to this carol service. Yeah, we're so glad to have you with us. If you haven't connected already on our website, please do that, stphillips.org.uk, or online via social media at SP Chapel Street. And we just want to wish you a very happy, blessed Christmas. everybody, welcome to St. Philip's and here we are for our Chris Stingle service. It's Christmas Eve! Turn to the person next to you and say, it's Christmas Eve! Good, now turn to the other person and tell them what you would love to have for Christmas. Great, now we are just about to start our service. We're going to do the Chris Stingle. Hopefully you have got your pack. We're going to explain that in a minute. Um, but first of all, we're going to just light our Advent wreath as a way of remembering that we are almost at Christmas Day. So just take a minute, and maybe actually at home, you could find a candle and just light that yourselves very safely, all right? Children, maybe not a good idea for you to be lighting candles, but parents, caregivers, over to you. As you light a candle, I'll light these four right now. Before we start, let me pray. God, I thank you that it's Christmas Eve. Thank you for all the excitement in our homes. Thank you for the birth of Jesus that we get to celebrate tomorrow. Lord, be with us, I pray, as we encounter, as we understand the story of the world, of what it means to follow you. Thank you for Jesus. Be present today, I pray, in your name. Amen. Lovely. We're going to start our service now. And throughout the service, uh, we're going to have songs. I'd love to encourage you to stand and sing along. All the words will appear on the screen. Uh, we're also um, going to follow uh, some readings. We're going to have the Christmas story presented in a slightly different way. Uh, so we're going to have a song first, then we're going to have our reading, and then the story, and then... You're going to get to open those boxes ready to do the Chris Stingle. Get your oranges ready, everybody. Let's sing our first song.
Said, Don't be afraid, I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. The Saviour, yes, the Messiah. The Lord has been born tonight in Bethlehem, the city of David, and this is how you would recognize him. You'll find a baby lying in a manger, but snuggling strips of cloth. During this time, some wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born, King of the Jews? We saw a star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly disturbed. He said to the wise men, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went on ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the baby was. They were thrilled and excited to see the star. Then they went into the house and saw the baby with Mary, his mother. They knelt down and worshipped him and gave the, him their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh.
well sung at home, we could hear you here. Uh, we are now going to build our Christingle. But first of all, I want to introduce you to a really good mate of mine. Who are you? Uh, hello, I'm Joel. Ah! Excellent, Joel. Yes. Uh, Joel is now part of staff. I am. Uh, as I have been for the last couple of years. Uh, Joel, what is your job at St. Philip's? So I look after our wonderful young people and students. Amazing. So we're going to do uh, build the Chris Dingles together. Um, Joel, I've already sent out boxes. Yes. Um, but have you got your box? My box did arrive in the post. Okay, so great. Sorry. So you've got your Thanks. box. Great. Now is the time to open that. Even though it's not Christmas Day. Even though it's not Christmas Day. Okay. I'm going to let you open okay. this first present Great. from St. Phillips. Here we go. Okay. You're going to need all of these things for this time together. All right. Great. Cracking. And also, you're going to need an orange. That was the thing that I couldn't get in mm. the post box. I think it would probably either go a bit smelly or wouldn't fit. Squashed mm. and postman wouldn't be very happy. Yeah. Postman wouldn't be happy. So, therefore, um, have you got your orange? Joel, have you got an orange? I've got an orange. Excellent. Great. So we're going to just talk around these things, um, but I haven't got anything yet. No. Where is your orange? Did you leave yours at home? Um, didn't come in the post. Oh. Do you have someone to yourself? I'll just go and find it. Okay. Back in a minute. Yeah. Rick? Where have you gone? <laughs> right, I got it. Here we go. Got it right here. There it is. All right, I've got my orange. I like big oranges. Yeah, good, isn't it? Right. So orange. I've got my orange. You've got your orange. You've got your orange at home. So, Joel. Yeah. What's so like? It's orange. Yes, well, it is. Have a jumper like that. Yes, yeah, it is. Good. Yes. Um, why an orange? Why an orange? Well, this kind of helps us to think about the world and about this beautiful place that we get to live in. It says in the Bible, in Genesis, that God created the world, um, and each day after he'd created, he said, it is good. And so, this world is beautiful. There are some incredible places. Um, meanwhile, give me your top three favorite places in the world that you've been to. Um, Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe. Ooh. Um, Licky Hills in Birmingham, which is a lovely country park. Okay, nice. Um, <laughs> and uh, my parents' house. Of course. Mm. Very nice. Um, and so what is your favourite place? Maybe your top three favourite places uh, in the world. Why don't you just share those very quickly with the people that you're watching this with. Go for it. And then Rick. Yes. I've also got this. Yes. Now, what's this about? Are we, are we tightening our hair? Are we, what are we doing with that? No, it's probably not long enough. Okay. Um, but in actual fact, this is representing blood. In actual fact, it's representing this world that Christians talk about all the time called sin. All right. And they're the bad, bad things that we think, we say, we do that hurt other people and ultimately uh, hurt ourselves and also God. And so the red part is all about remembering that actually the world isn't perfect. It is broken, uh, and we're human, and we're broken as well. Um, I'm not going to get you to share your deepest, darkest sins with us. Thank you. Um, but in actual fact, it's an acknowledgement of understanding that maybe we're not doing everything right and how we should be living. So what you need to do, Joel, is you need to wrap it around your orange, and then you just need to tie a bow. I'm going to try All it. All right, so at home, if you get hold of your ribbon, and you wrap it around, and then you tie a bow just as a reminder of what it was that the world was perfect but then through humans it has become broken and that relationship that friendship with God was broken in that amazing okay so we're just going to take a minute and um, because it might shock you but Joel isn't perfect I'm not perfect we get stuff wrong and so to have a moment and on this really exciting day just to think about those things that maybe we're just not doing the best in the best way to live. So just take a moment to be still, think about those things that maybe you've had some arguments, maybe you've fallen out with people, maybe there's stuff going on um, that we're just going to offer to God now. So just close our eyes. God, I thank you for this world that we get to live in. 
but I'm saddened by the way that it is broken. I'm saddened by the way at times that I act, that I think, that I speak. And so God, I pray right now that you will, as we seek your forgiveness, as we ask your forgiveness, that you will come. And know that what the Bible says is that as we ask for your forgiveness, you will give it. God, we thank you that you are a God who loves us and want that relationship with us. In your name, amen. Thank you to all the key workers, especially the doctors, who have guided us through this hard time. Thank you very much. Dear Lord, I thank you for everything that you've taught us in lockdown and that our gratitude for everyday things has grown massively because of you. Thank you that Christ comes first in Christmas. Amen. May we pray. Jesus, Saviour, you are the light shining in the dark corners of the world. Be the Saviour, you are the Word of God made alive in a child born in Bethlehem. Jesus Saviour, you humbled yourself to become one of us, to teach us, to show us, to love us. 
Jesus, Saviour, you gave up heaven to be with us, then you surrendered your human life to die for our freedom on a Roman cross. Lord Jesus, forgive us for the times we have not trusted you fully and have let fear control and shape us. Shine your light into our lives. Lord Jesus, forgive us for not making the most of the life that you offer to everyone. Help us to care for those who are denied the full and free life that you make possible. May we speak up against injustice wherever we see or hear of it, even when it costs us. Lord Jesus, forgive us for the times we've not loved God or our neighbours. Help us to be known by the way in which we love like you loved, held, holding nothing back. Lord Jesus, forgive us when we fill our lives with things that don't last instead of seeking the things that you want to bless us with. Jesus Saviour, your name means forgiveness and freedom. Thank you that no sin is too deep for you to forgive and no burden is too heavy for you to take. As we celebrate again this Christmas, the wonder of you being here with us, please fill us once more with your Holy Spirit and help us to walk in the way of your freedom. In your name we pray. Amen. Great. How are you doing? Um, show the uh, orange to the screen so I can see it. Good, it's going well. Joel, yours looks excellent. Thank now, you. Some, what, something else in your box. Mm. So, that, so I've got four things. Yeah, okay. And I quite want to eat them all. Okay. But I don't think I should. Probably shouldn't just yet. No. But this is the time for you to find your lollipops, everybody. Excellent. Well done, Joel. And what I want you to do is I want you to stick them at four points in the orange. Yep, that's it. Ooh. Great. And I'm going to do the same here. Uh, with my uh, rather large lollipops. Great one, two. Now, Joel, what do you think these um, would represent? What do you think they, these are about? Uh, that's a very good question, Rick. Is it something to do with um, how sweet the earth is? Ooh. Is that no. a good question? No, uh, it's a good option, no. but uh, sadly uh, not. Um, these are all to help us to remember about the good things that are going on in our world, in our life, really. Um, traditionally, back in the day, um, they would be about remembering the four seasons and remembering of that actually God has been good in all of those uh, times, even though it might not feel as though it. And this year has been really, really rough on the whole world, right? This whole COVID thing has knocked us all for six. And I, but even so, in that time, there has been some things that have been good. You know, I've been able to spend that little bit more time with my family because we've all been at home all together. Most of the time, that was good. Uh, for me, I loved it. I'm not sure about the others. <laughs> uh, but also, you know, I've seen God do incredible things, um, even through being doing church online. You know, what have you seen that has been that you've enjoyed that's been good about this year? Even though it's been really, really hard, it's probably harder to find those good things in this time but there still are some great things that are happening in our world i mean even recently we've had the news of the vaccine you know maybe that's something that you want to say thank you for so as you are placing your oranges uh, or your oranges start again as you are placing uh, your lollipops into your orange just take a moment what are the four things that have been good uh, over this last year uh, that you would like to give thanks for. Great. And one of the things that we uh, do as part of um, St. Philip's here is we do have something called Bags of Hope. And one of the good things that we've been able to do is really just bless other people, to give things to other people. And so here's a little video all about Bags of Hope and how you could help other people this Christmas. Hi, I'm Sally Carman and I'm here to ask you to get involved with something called Bags of Hope which helps the most vulnerable in Manchester and beyond. Um, this Christmas, if you can get involved and you want to know more about it, just sit back and watch this video. Bags of Hope is a simple idea to bless Manchester, Salford and beyond, bringing hope in unexpected places and make a practical difference to someone's life. Your workplace, school, church or friendship group can become an unexpected place of hope 
to people experiencing brokenness or poverty in these four different areas of life. Asylum seekers, vulnerable women, the homeless, and deprived local communities. Each bag of hope has a shopping list of 10 items appropriate for the person you're buying for. On the back of this, you can write a message to the person who will receive it. Once you put it all together, you can post your bag on Instagram with the hashtag Bags of Hope and show your unexpected place of hope. The bag needs to find its way back to us. Simply return it to where you collected your empty bag and we will do the rest. And that's it. A bag of hope. Hope in unexpected places. If you would like to fill a bag or if your workplace, church or school would like to run this simple project, please contact Lizzie or Janet at Bags of Hope at stphillips.org.uk or on 0161 839 9709. Ten items, one bag. Bags of Hope. Hope in unexpected places. So my name's Ros Holland and I work for the Boas Trust um, in Manchester and we work with people who've become homeless through the asylum process. So at the moment we're accommodating just over 75 um, individuals who've got nowhere else to stay um, and we support them in lots of different ways. Um, we manage 21 shared houses at the moment um, and normally at this time of year we'd have our winter night shelter but we haven't been able to operate that this year because of Covid. I think we've been really grateful to receive Bags of Hope over the last um, year or two really. So before Covid in, in normal life, um, what was brilliant was whenever we moved somebody new into one of our houses, we were able to give them a Bag of Hope to welcome them to the house. So they had the basics provided for them um, in a really nice bag and with a little message of support as well, which was really encouraging. And I think for um, our support workers, it was a really nice thing to be able to do to welcome someone into the house with that bag. And we had really positive feedback from people People about the fact the stuff in the bags was always really great it was what was needed really good quality items um, and little treats as well so little treats like biscuits or chocolates things that just made a real difference to people and that was wonderful but then when lockdown hit we um, we didn't quite see so many people moving in new to our houses but what was incredible was we had a stash of bags of hope and around the time lockdown started in March we had to close our night shelters and we had nine or ten men who we just didn't know where we were going to be able to accommodate them so we worked in partnership with the council and we were able to move them into local hostels but again we were able to give them a bag of hope which just had the basics they needed to start kind of this new season um, in a hostel. Um, over the last few months in lockdown, we have been able to give bags of hope out when people have moved into our accommodation, but we've also been able to use them instead um, of having our sort of monthly free shop that we normally do, where people can come to Boaz and they can come and get free food, free toiletries. So instead of that, we've been able to hand deliver bags of hope as part of our monthly regular top up of supplies. And again, that's just been really vital and so helpful to our work. So yeah, we're really thankful for bags of hope and for all the great stuff that's been given through them. I'm going to be filling a bag and if you'd like to fill one too you can pick one up outside St Phillips in one of the black bins along with a list of what to get or you can just give financially with the link below. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, maybe you could um, think a bit more about how you could help people uh, this Christmas. Uh, Joel, there's one more thing in your box. Yes. Because uh, you've got your orange, which reminds us of the world. Yeah. We've got the red around it, which reminds us of the brokenness and our sin. Yeah. Uh, we also thought about the good things that have happened over this last year. Um, and now there's one more thing, yeah. which is... A candle. A candle. What do you think that's for? Uh, I honestly couldn't tell you, Rick. Okie dokie. Well, I'm going to tell you. Don't worry Go about it. it. Uh, now, uh, parents, caregivers, you may need to cut a hole in the top of your orange if you haven't done that uh, already. Um, uh, thankfully, Joel has. Uh, well, uh, it's in. Well done. So you need to make sure that that is solidly in. Excellent. Um, now, the candle, um, I need to go and find mine. So while you're cutting your holes and putting mm. them in, I'll go and find the candle for our yeah. orange here. Okay. Great. Here it is. So the candle is ready. You've got your I candle do. ready. And you did say, what is this about? Mm. Well, it helps us to remember about Jesus because Jesus came into the world. That's why we celebrate Christmas. 
Um, and he said um, that he is the light of the world. Very good, you see, which is why we kind of remember through the candle that Jesus is the light of the world. He also said, I have come to give life, life in all its fullness. And how he did that was that at Easter, we celebrate the fact that yes, Jesus died, but he also rose again to overcome this thing called sin uh, because of all of the great stuff that he has for us in the kingdom of God that he talked about. And that kingdom of God can be here as well as in the future. And so as we light our candles, we're gonna almost give thanks to what it is that Jesus came to the earth to do. Now, yes, he was a little baby and people think, well, what can babies really do? But the reality is that this kid was a special kid. As we've heard from our readings, as we've seen the story, um, Jesus came and brought light and life. And maybe you at home, uh, you've thought about Jesus and what's all of that all about? Well, I would love you to invite you to Alpha. Uh, In your pack as well, there is a grey leaflet that explains a little bit about what Alpha is. Why don't you join us in January to understand a bit more about this Jesus guy that we talk about all the time. Alpha Online is a free course designed to give you the space and time to ask the big and often challenging questions about life, faith and meaning from the comfort of your own home. No filters, just honest discussion. Alpha Online is made up of a film series which are designed to create conversations around topics such as How can I pray? Who is Jesus? What is the meaning of life? Why is there suffering in this world? Each week you will have an opportunity to watch a short video and then chat about it with a small group of people who, like you, are also grappling with life's big questions. And no question is off limits. To attend an Alpha Online, all you have to do is sign up and then join a weekly online call, all from the comfort of your home. Everything else is taken care of by your host. So feel free to pour yourself a drink, get comfy, get your laptop ready, and you are good to go. What have you got to lose? Try Alpha online. I came to the Alpha through my friend Michelle, who used to be my young offending worker when I was 14. <laughs> And Michelle just inspired me from a video that I'd seen. Before I started the Alpha, I had been through a really difficult situation um, and it, the outcome wasn't very good. And I was really, really struggling to deal with the outcome. I didn't agree with it. I had a lot of anger inside me, frustration, all kinds of emotions. Since I've started the Alpha course, all them things I don't feel guilty, I don't feel bad about myself, I don't feel like it's my fault. I've got calm and peace and I'm, I'm happy with the way that I feel about it now. Yeah. I'm not blaming myself now. I would say to anybody that hasn't heard about Alpha before, that I would definitely recommend for them to go. Um, and anyone that is looking for any faith or guidance, then the Alpha is for you. So now, why don't you, the candle that you lit at the start, why don't you light your candle in your orange off that and take a moment just to think. Think about the Christmas story. Think about which bits you love. Think about this guy, Jesus. Would you like to know him? And I'm going to say a really simple prayer. And then we're going to light this candle. God, we thank you for Jesus. Thank you that um, he came to earth. And he came to bring life and he came to bring the light. In those parts of our lives that are dark. Jesus, come and bring your light. In those parts of our life where it just doesn't seem fun, it just doesn't seem good, it just seems to be just 
gnarly and hard. God, I ask for those that are here now that you will bring life and life in all its fullness. Jesus, in this quiet moment before the craziness, show yourself to people. Reveal. Speak. Hmm. Jesus, thank you that you are the light of the world and you came to bring life, life in all its fullness. In your name, amen. Now, blow your candle out. We're going to light this candle as a celebration that Jesus is the light of the world and he came to bring life, life in all its fullness. Okay. Joel, over to you, buddy. Should we stand back? <laughs> has it got it? I don't know if it has. Going. It's going. Keep going. there we have it. Who'd have thought an exercise ball being set on fire with a candle? Hey, it's 2020. 
anything could happen, right? Friends, it's been great to uh, enjoy this with you. Granted, it wasn't in this beautiful building. We didn't have the lighting of the candles from the front and to the back and then seeing the light spread in this building. But my hope and prayer is that you've still been able to enjoy and understand that little bit more about the Christmas story. Because the world is still the world. God loves the world. It may be broken, yes, but he still has good things to give to us. And as we remember at this time of the year that Jesus came, the light and the life of the world. Friends, I I really hope and pray that 2021 is better than 2020. And maybe tonight has been the first time that you've wondered or dared to even think about being understanding more about Jesus I encourage you take us up on that invite to Alpha I really believe the things that you've heard today I believe that Jesus is the light of the world that he is the one who came to bring life and life in all its fullness have a think about it you never know Maybe you'll encounter. (sighs) Well, there we have it. It is the end of our Christingle service. I hope and pray that you have been able to enjoy and engage with it in the best way possible. Granted, we weren't in this beautiful building. We weren't uh, having our candles lit and, and watching the light spread through the building. But it's 2020. We didn't realise that this time last year, that this was going to be this year. What does 21 hold? We don't know. But I do know that the things that I've talked about tonight with Joel, the things about Jesus being the light of the world, that Jesus is the one who came to bring life and life in all its fullness. I believe that. And maybe tonight has been the first time that you've gone, I want to take this more seriously. I want to step deeper into this relationship that Rick and Joel have talked about. I encourage you, take us up on that invite to Alpha. I dare you. Friends, I pray that you have an incredible Christmas day. And that this new year will bring something even better, way better than this previous year has been. Bless you, friends, and I'll see you in 2021.